there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I'm really excited that you could join me today I've got a lot of fun in store for you so what are we waiting for let's get crafting today we're going to be working on DIY spring and Easter home decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies so let's get started from Dollar Tree I have this mini bucket off camera I took the handle off and I'll be using this round smaller vase and then I bought one of these extra large magnets and then from my supply I've got this round unfinished wood piece now you could cut foam board or a piece of cardboard out and I got a bag of these at Hobby Lobby in their unfinished wood section and then I just have a little wood knob for my supply now you could get I noticed Dollar Tree starting to carry little shape knobs which would be cute and then I've got these wooden dominoes from Dollar Tree so I'm gonna paint with rust-oleum matte black spray paint the bucket and the wood circle the magnet and the wood knob off camera um, now I'm gonna paint all these little hearts here with Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth and then I'm also going to paint the wood dominoes as well just show you a little bit of this the one kind of country looking hearts I'll have a link in the description box below where you could find those now for my dominoes I'm gonna make them look like envelopes so what I did is I traced my dominoes and then I cut the paper about an eighth inch shorter than the domino and now I'm just going in from corner to corner with my ruler on three of my pieces just cardstock paper and I'm just kind of drawing at a diagonal to make it look like a little envelope flap and then I'm taking all my pieces to my sewing machine so how I sewed this flap is I go around the perimeter first using a size 10 needle all polyester thread my tension set on four my stitch length is on four I go around the edges first and then once I get to the end of that I cut in at the diagonal and I just sew right on those lines I drew now if you don't have a sewing machine you want to do this you could use like a fine tip sharpie marker or something like that to kind of you know draw your envelope so to speak just like that and then I have some scriptures I printed off my computer onto this cardstock. One side's got a design, the other side's plain. Just some Bible scriptures I like. And I'm just taking all those to the sewing machine as well. And I believe I um, cut eight scriptures out. My thought was, you know, to fill it up, but then I thought, well, maybe only seven. So like the week of Easter, you could go in once a day and just kind of, you don't know which one you're going to pull out, pull out one of these scriptures because we're going to roll them up like little scrolls and then you can open it up and kind of have your journal Bible scripture for the day and read the quote to yourself kind of leading up to Easter was my thought process on this. I just thought it'd make Easter just a little more special. So now we're just taking 80 grit sandpaper and my sanding block and we're just kind of sanding around all the edges of the wood pieces, which you don't really see a whole lot because the wood pieces are light underneath and then I use light paint on top, but still I know I did the process. But of course you could skip this step if you want. I just like that little extra rustic texture here. It's just really subtle, but I know that it's there. I'll show you on this heart this is what it looks like see just really subtle using beacon fabri -Tac glue today we're going to start assembling our little envelopes together so we're taking two dominoes and gluing them I did paper side to paper side as you can see here just to make it a nice little thick envelope now if you can't find these dominoes you can certainly cut out poster board or cardboard and then I'm taking my open end of my scissor blades before I glue my paper on and I am just scraping along all the edges of my papers just to add that little bit more rustic texture just like that so what we'll do is glue a plain piece of cardstock to the back and then on the front we'll glue the cardstock that looks like the envelope front or the envelope back I guess it really is that's the envelope back and the other's the front so to speak so we'll do that on all three pieces. Just going to add my glue ahead of time here. And then we'll add the other part. 
I think these turned out cute. And I didn't need too many because that little vase is small, so you don't really have to do a whole lot in it. And you could skip these if you didn't and you just wanted to do little scripture verses in it as well. And then I'm taking the smaller hearts and gluing it right in the center of that flap. But I just thought this would just give it just a little bit more, just a little bit something extra. Just like, you know, the scripture verses or love letters, uh, you know, from Jesus, basically, so to speak. So that was kind of my thought process. And I'm just going around some of these, or I do it on all the papers, but I'm showing one here, scrape along the edges, and then I'm running it on a larger dowel and then a smaller dowel just to kind of break up the fibers of the paper. And then I've got thin piece of white twine and I'll wrap it around our little scroll here and then tie a little bow. And of course, I'll do the rest off camera. This is what, it, when you know, cut off a little excess, make your bow as long as you want. And then here's, you know, a bunch of them ready to go. So now we're gonna do the bottom part of our bucket and the top. We're making, of course, a little, you know, inspirational gumball machine. So I'm gluing my little knob to the wood circle, just like this. And once I've got that centered, then I'll glue this ensemble to the magnet. The magnet just fits the top of that little round vase perfectly, so it'll act like our little lid. And I'll set that aside to dry. Now while we're waiting, we're going to work on the, I wanted to put a scripture on the bottom of our little gumball machine. And you know, the gumball machines have a little button, right? So I'm going to use the heart as the little button, you know, the little button that you turn to, you know, get your, you know, your surprise out or whatever. So the font I'm using here is Georgia and Corona uh, from defont.com. The Corona is a derivative of defont.com. I have to always say that. I'll have that link down below, but the other one, you just kind of go do a search on defont and you'll find it. So I'm not telling you quite what this scripture is yet because I thought it was kind of fun that I made the heart the part of the quote. Here comes the top. Perfect. And I'm using kind of a cream color vinyl, um, paper studio vinyl. And then the scripture is John 16, 33. I actually start with it really big here, but I end up not liking the size. So I take it off, off camera and I print a smaller size here. So when you see it as a whole, you'll see the scripture reference verse a little smaller. I just thought it was just too big. It didn't quite fit in the space very good. Anyway, we'll get these off here, just showing you this process. Use my Cricut Explore Air machine. So using Cricut Design Space to make my quote. I want you to see all this process too. And then we'll put our little button on. So when you turn the little button, of course, you pop out a little scripture. And then here comes our knob. So in the end, once you put the knob on, it says, but take heart for I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. And here you can see where the scripture reference is a little smaller. So I'm using a uh, Gorilla Glue here to glue on the top of our little gumball machine. Doesn't take much. I decided to try this glue because I usually use E6000 and I think I like this better because E6000 will slide around for an hour before it finally sets up. Gorilla Glue set in a minute. Then you go ahead in literally a minute and you still have to wait 24 hours, but a minute. So you load all your stuff into our little gumball machine. And then I have a little cross here. Uh, it's a little ornament I'm gonna add to the side. And once I add this, this project is complete.
Before we move on to project number two, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. If you're new here, I love to do all sorts of DIY home decor crafts from Dollar Tree crafts to farmhouse to rustic to primitive and even paper crafting. I post videos once a week, so go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. If you're on Instagram, I'd love to have you join me over there, so pop on over and say hi. And also, I have a Facebook group. If you're looking for a little bit more inspiration from myself as well as other crafters, I will have the link to Instagram and my Facebook group in the description box but for now let's move on to project number two for this project you're going to need one of these tall metal buckets and a package of these really cute decorative eggs and then I got some of these flowers which are petunias got some white ones and then I've got some of these cute flowers I really like these uh, blooming branches and then I've got some onion grass, actually two onion grass you'll need. If you only have one, it'll work. Um, wood craft dowels, the long ones, you'll need a couple of those. And then I've got some of these dripping blossoms. I think I used two of those. And then some of these wood bunnies, you just need one little wood bunny. And then I've got some of this wire jute cord, so just one of these. And then I have one of these left over. They were the, you know, for St. Patrick's Day, and they had the hearts on them, the clovers, and I just took the hearts off. I bought four or five of those and removed the hearts of, off of them. If you don't have those, you could use the wood heart ornaments from Dollar Tree or even some of these wood planks. You just need something to make a sign out of. And then I've got just some of this greenery from my supply that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. We're going to make a really cute, cute Easter bouquet. And then you'll need some... Uh, foam floral in and I have a couple of ribbons here from this one here is from Hobby Lobby and the other one is from Walmart the cream burlap so any ribbon of your choosing and then I have one of these they come in a thing of four they're really small from Hobby Lobby but you could skip this step if you want so and I'll explain that in a minute so what you're going to do is actually off of two buckets I took the twine off the top and then I was going to originally just spray paint the whole thing in this uh, one shade of brown that I wanted, but it wasn't dark enough brown for me. So I'm like, I'll go get my dark brown. Then I started spraying and I didn't have enough. So I'm like, okay, now what do I do? So it started coming out in splatters. So then I grabbed my light brown and I kind of spritzed it from way far away to make it look like splatters. So all of this came out as a happy accident. You could totally just, I think it turned out kind of cool. This is what it looks like. So, um, you know, you could try that step, just kind of back far away and do some spritzes all the way around. Once you paint your main color on, spritz with two additional colors. So this part here, I wanted to use the smaller bamboo wreath. Now you could skip this part, like I said, it is a little bit tedious, but I do like the effect of it, but you could just totally use rope from Dollar Tree or twine. But these things are so easy to take apart. Once you take the main thing off, they come apart like that, they keep their shape, you can tighten them, twist them, whatever, and they stay in that round shape. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just gluing some rope to the top, then I'll alternate with that bamboo wreath, then some rope, alternate bamboo wreath, and then some rope all the way down. And you can kind of see how I'm doing. You just hold it really tight. It's so flexible because it kind of stays in its round shape. Again, like I said, real tedious, but it does work. Pull it really, really, really tight. And then once you get it where you want it, I've got some black thin wire here I'm using from Dollar Tree and I'll just bring it around, you know, the two edges that it meet and it twists the wire into place. And then I just covered that wire with a few pieces of that bamboo stuff, just kind of glued over the top using my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. Now, again, if you didn't get a hold of these or don't like this look, it does scratch the bucket up a little bit, the paint coming off, but I just kind of use that to my advantage and I you know, scrape that a little bit more around, making it look rustic, you know, just went in places around the bucket, making it look rustic where it had rubbed off. So it worked out fine. But like I said, you could just wrap, you know, kind of rope, you know, go and alternating, you know, rope, leave just plain bucket, alternating rope, leave plain bucket. If you didn't want to wrap that bamboo around, I just wanted it to look a little more rustic and have a little more texture and something besides just rope. So your choice, how you want to do it, you could just totally leave it as it is from the store. Either way, you don't have to do anything to it. I, like I said, I just wanted to add a little something different on top. But again, using that bamboo worked, but it was a little bit tedious. 
So here I am again, I'm just kind of twisting it on like I did before, adding the wire, and then I'll add the remaining rope down near the bottom edge off camera, I think. <laughs> we'll see what I do. You do these projects and then you come in a couple days later and do the voiceover. Yep, that's what I did. So this is what it looks like. And you can see where just took a little piece of like 120 grit sandpaper and distressed around the bucket. So it kind of brought in the areas where the paint peeled off. But, you know, you don't really notice it because it looks like I intentionally did it all that way in the first place. So now we're just painting our wood shapes. So one of the hearts or, you know, if you use the square wood or sign or use a piece of foam board, whatever, just painting my wood shapes. And I have a little wood uh, shape tag here from my supply. And then I have an egg here uh, from my supply. This is the same place that I got the hearts in the other uh, first project from. So I'll leave the link down below for that and then one of the wood bunnies and I did fill the hole with wood filler off camera and then what I did I'm covering my pieces all my wood pieces with just some cream colored cardstock so I trace my wood pieces and I go in about an eighth of an inch and I redraw the perimeter and I do it for the front just like that of all my wood shapes so this is what it would look like once you cut it out now the back when I traced it as you can see here I just traced it in its entirety I didn't cut it short at all I was going to paint everything and then I decided, no, I just got to have paper on it. I like that kind of rustic country look. So again, I scraped around the edges of everything as well. Did that off camera because we already kind of did that on the first project. I didn't want to show you again. And I also painted a couple of those wooden dowels too, those long wooden dowels. So the bunny we're doing front and back in its entirety. And then the other ones, we're going to wait a minute on those. Just glued the back on. So that's what it looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and glue the dowel onto the back of our sign, whichever shape you choose, and the back of the bunny. And I'm going to let that sit up as we work on the rest of our project. Now I am making some signs here. This is Annual Cottontail Egg Hunt. I used quite a few variety of uh, letters, Cricut Design Space, and I like to do my words like on the word annual it is a combination of better memories and add addenda <laughs> I can't say that addenda uh, fonts cottontail is um, board contest and then egg hunt like the word egg is glorial and bochella and the word hunt is glorial and better memories so what I do when I look for fonts is I will go ahead and I look for fonts that have like the same thinness or thickness of letters and put those together so like on the egg the E is one font and the G's are two different fonts so I hope you understand what I'm saying here I like to combine my fonts so this is a brad if we call in scrapbooking world or a fastener and I'm just putting it through a little hole I made in one of the papers for our tag and now we're going to work on the rest of our quote so this one is just the Georgia font this way to bunny and I'm putting it on the front of our egg shape here so now you can see why except for the bunny I did not glue the front of my papers onto my shapes yet just so it'd be easier to rub on my quotes here so I hope what I talked about on my other fonts was easiest because I know I'll have it listed in the description box all the fonts I used but I just like to take my fonts and, you know, I don't always just use one font for one word. I'll combine a couple of fonts to make one word. So got this on my tag here. And then what I'm doing is kind of going to glue this wood tag shape. I've got a little arrow here, a little metal arrow I picked up in the scrapbooking section is Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby. You can get a little, a little thing of arrows, like four or five arrows come to a package. I'm gluing a little smaller arrow on here onto the tag shape and then we'll glue this whole set onto the bottom of the egg so it kind of makes our whole sign this way to bunny trail I thought it'd be cute that way instead of trying to fit it all on the egg just kind of make a little continuation now we're going to work on our handle this is where the wire rope comes in so about 27 inches long two pieces of the wire rope and just twist it into a braid and then I just take a little bit of the Fabri-Tac glue here and I just kind of glue the end done. Then I'll twist it into a little handle shape here. 
and then we're going to glue it into both sides of the bucket and then I've also cut a couple of little rectangle pieces of cardboard here so I'll put glue on one end of my rope and then cardboard around it and then I'm using the cute little clips from Dollar Tree to kind of glue those together and hold it onto the bucket so adding the rope with some glue, the cardboard with some glue, and adding the little clips to glue it to the bucket. Well, not glue it, to hold it to the bucket. And let it set a while. And then I'm adding some styrofoam into the bucket here. Going to make our little Easter bouquet and make it, of course, look like it's in a little Easter bucket. You can't see it here. I'm sorry I'm off camera, but I'm putting in one of the onion grasses here. Just the whole thing. And then the other onion grass, I clip off about four pieces here. And then what I'll do is add two of these pieces to each side of that one whole onion grass. Now you can see it a little bit better just to fill it in a little bit more. I kind of want onion grass along the whole back side of our little Easter basket bouquet here. And then we'll start adding in some of our flowers, of course. Adding in this little bit of greenery here that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was like $4.99 for a bunch of this stuff. And then I, of course, got it at half price. So it was like $2.50. You could use whatever greenery you want. Some other greenery from Dollar Tree. I just wanted a little bit something different, but still have some greenery in there. Got that in. This is what it looks like so far. Still letting those clips hold in our little handle. And then I'm going to clip off the little uh, blooming branches here. So I can use them in the bouquet, and I like to take all the leaves off too. And we're just going to start poking those in around that perimeter into our little bouquet. I'm definitely not, you know, a flower designer or not flower designer, bouquet designer by any means, but I think this turned out kind of cute. Now we're taking our little clips off. I think our rope's sat enough. We're all done with that. Then we're gonna start adding in our flowers, our petunias. Our Dollar Tree had white and pink ones, but of course I got the white ones because I had the pink in my hand, but then I ended up getting the white ones because then I really like those other pink flowers. I got about four or five bunches of those because I think they're so cute. Dollar Tree has kind of stepped up their game with some flowers this time around, I think. So just kind of setting my petunias in and around where I want them, of course. I originally saw this idea, I think it was on, I, I was going to say, I think it was on Pinterest, but I think it was something you could buy like from an online store. And I'm like, I can make that. <laughs> so this is what we're doing. And then we're going to add in some of our little dripping blossoms here. When I start these, you can see I bend them down. I just said doing that to kind of get them into position and out of the way. But off camera, then I, um, toward the end, once I get everything in, I kind of pull them back up, unbend them, and kind of just let them stick out the side a little bit. But when I put them in, I just kind of bend them down and out of the way because they really do hang down quite well. But I thought they were really cute for, you know, dripping down our little Easter uh, bucket here our Easter pail. How many things see that's what it looks like and then I'm going to add a few more at the top just to tie those ones in at the bottom moving them around here. It's Easter bucket, Easter bouquet, I don't know. And then we're going to add in five eggs so whatever colors you choose. I have quite a few packages of these so I ended up with kind of like a pink as you can see here and then a dark and light turquoise and a dark and light purple. I'm just using five eggs here kind of off to one side And then we're going to add in our little bunny over here to the left, kind of right near our little handle. And then we're going to add our sign to the right side behind the handle because I want that to stick up almost as pretty well as tall as the handle. And I'm making a ribbon here. What I did is just pleated it back and forth so that I have three loops on each side. And I'm taking my scissors and cutting it in the center of those three loops about an inch in on each side. And then I'll take a piece of wire here from Dollar Tree just through the center and then I'll just pull it really tight and twist it around. I also take the front loop, the front tail because it ends up on the front and I twist it to the back and I poke it through the back of the wire first 
so that it keeps it back there and then I twist the wire together using some pliers here to get a nice tight twist and then I take each of these because we cut into it it allows us to twist and turn so that we can separate all the loops a little bit just like that we're going to do the same thing on this twine wire now again I got this from Hobby Lobby and the other one was from Walmart the little burlap trim looping it back and forth so I have three loops on each side and kind of cut off the excess length I don't need and then I'm going to in the center of those loops I'm going to cut about an inch on one side turn it about an inch on the other side take the wire and I'm going to loop it through those little slits we just cut and then the front tail I twisted it to the back and then I'm poking the wire through it to hold that tail onto the back side twisting it around a bit now the wire on this is a little bit long because we're going to attach it to the other bow so I'll show you here in just a second once I uh, twist my loops I've got that wire open and we're going to use that to go through the center of the other bow and then we're going to twist it around the wire left on the other bow and just kind of twist them both together now I've got a skewer here and then I've got some of this floral tape you can get some at ha or a uh, Dollar Tree this is from Hobby Lobby it's white but they have green at Dollar Tree and floral tape is not sticky so when you're winding with floral tape you just wind it around like you're taping it but you pull it nice and tight and that kind of activates the sticky but it will hold everything on it's really strong and then you just twist down till you cover all your wire up and pull the excess off and then we're gonna tuck it into the left side right underneath the bunny there so this is what it looks like we have one last thing to do and that is to tuck in our little egg sign this way to the bunny trail and that makes this project complete well I really hope you enjoyed both projects today I love how our first project our little gumball machine has its focus on Easter and Jesus and you can take a scroll out you know the whole week before Easter one every day and just read a scripture to keep your thought process on Jesus and what it Easter is really about and I love how this Easter basket bouquet turned out I mean really you could leave it up for spring spring just started right so even after Easter is done you can enjoy it a little bit longer Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Remember, if you're not a subscriber, to go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. Please give this video a thumbs up. And I want to leave you with one extra thought. Pursue great dreams. God has a plan for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? I thank you for sharing your time with me. And I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.